Do not pray because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Thank you.
read this. Every day a struggle. But with you, Lord, by my side, the task becomes much easier, and you I do abide. You light up the load for me. You take me by the hand. You put your arms around me. I know you understand. Every day is a struggle, but with you there in my life, I know that I can make it because you bear with me my strife. And, and, and I, I, I know it's a struggle for all of us. It's a struggle for us in here because it's just a few of us. And if one drop out, you know, they dropped out, and somebody's going to step up into that spot <laughs> and take it. You know, you may not sing like that person, you may not pray like that person, but you do what God has given you. Because everybody don't pray alike, and everybody don't have the same voice. So today, I don't want to have to remind you guys of this again this year. Uh, this is the first day of the first Sunday in the year, and everybody know what we need, and everybody have to step up to the plate and help us get what we need, okay? Uh, I don't see any visitors. <laughs> so, we're going to do our offering now. Brother Michael, are you with me? <laughs> I'm going to be reading from Malachi 6 through 10. 3 to 6 through 10. For I am the Lord, I change not. <clears throat> Therefore, ye, ye, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your father, ye you have gone away from my orders, and ye have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he robbed me. He had robbed me. But he said, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Ye are cursed with a curse. But he has robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, for there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And now we're going to stand as Michael comes. Amen. Amen. You may not be where you want to be, yes. but you show not where you used to be. Yes. Amen. Amen. You may not be in the best of health. But you're still healthy enough to lift your hands and give God some praise. Yeah. So I want you to be excited in here. Let me share with you. I've been getting phone calls over the last three or four days about how many people are not able to attend service this morning because over the last week and a half or two weeks, they have been exposed to and affected by this COVID-19. Amen. Come on, come on here, somebody. Amen. And so they're, they're calling because, for one, they don't want to infect nobody else. Mm -hmm. But for two, it's allowing you to know and understand that even if you're doing what you're supposed to do, somebody ain't. Amen. And if you don't protect yourself, mm -hmm. then you have the, 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 the potential That's to become true. sick because of the, 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 uh, the selfishness of someone else. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. But also, if you've already been vaccinated, you may have it and not even know it because you're not getting the same symptoms. Amen, amen. So I would that everybody would take 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 that time hmm. and, and begin to take the extra step. Amen, uh, amen. My wife and I had a couple of a couple of friends that was wanted to come over for New Year's Eve, and my wife said, "Anybody come in this door, hmm. have to take a test." Amen. She had those home tests. Amen. She got up, she made everybody in the house that morning take a test. Amen. You got grown kids telling you, I don't need to take that. She said, you plan to be up in here, you're going to take this. Everybody in the house tested negative. Amen. We had some friends come over. They come walking through the door. She said, before you sit down and get comfortable, Amen. I need you to take this test. Amen. And they took the test twice. Huh. They came up positive twice. She Amen. said, I love you. I love you, I love you. Stay right there, I'm gonna pack y'all plate. Mm. Y'all gonna go on home. Because me, my husband, nor my grandbaby can afford to get sick. Mm. 
because you don't know you sick. How we got a witness? Amen. If we take the extra steps, then we can make sure that we can help. When the Bible says that God says, if my people who are called by my name, yes. we've got to stop playing with that thing. Amen. Amen. And we've really got to seek the face of God in a different posture. we got to yes. stop acting as if it doesn't mean nothing. We got to stay on our face until God allows change to come. Amen. 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 I didn't get up to say all that, but I said it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, report from Papa Ford. He is doing a whole lot better. Amen. And uh, he said he just want to make sure that everything is gone before he comes back. Amen. But he's excited to tell everybody thank you for your love and your prayers. Happy New Year. And he will see y'all soon. Amen. 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 And I pray that everybody had a good and wonderful uh, New Year's. I see you're here so you didn't eat too much. Amen. Uh, amen. And so we're just going to spend a few minutes in the Word. If we can, it's amazing. I was listening as one of them, Maddie was talking. And she started talking about the old and... And I sat and I said, Lord, you something else. Can you give me a message about some old stuff? And she talked about some old stuff. I, I said, well, we better talk about it then. So it may confirm. So if you would, meet me over in Ecclesiastes chapter number one. And uh, we're going to start at verse number, verse number nine, is if that's all right. Now, we're going to flip this a little bit. So I'm going to give you the basics of the scripture that we're speaking of here. But then I'm going to tie something in with it so you can understand. This is going to be a, a, a series for a couple of weeks because there's so much to unpack with this particular subject that we're speaking of. So when you have it, please stand to your feet. Ecclesiastes 1, verses number 9 through 11. It's going to be our focus. <clears throat> and the word reads, That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. I need somebody to just say that to yourself. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, see this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. Therefore, no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. If I can use just for a subject matter today, for the next few weeks, I want to use this subject matter. The old still works. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. The old, the old. It still works. It still works. Amen. Have you say, Father, thank you now for this time we have to share. All of you and none of me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, the old still works. This, 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 this particular subject, God shared with me uh, just a few days ago as I was seeking him and asking him, Lord, what, what is it that you would have me to, to share? And when he put in my spirit that the old still works, it's amazing because when the writer here says that there is nothing new under the sun, that means... That the things that we are doing today has already been done. The, the, the crazy part is we're trying to rediscover what has already been discovered. It's almost like we're trying to reinvent a wheel that's already been invented. And if we look at the wheels on a car, they went from being wooden wheels and they have progressed to being rubber. Yes. But the wheel is still the wheel. Amen. It didn't change how the wheel turned. Ooh. It didn't change the purpose of the wheel. All it did was enhance what was already made. Amen. So we can't come and say the tires are new or wheels are new because wheels have already been here. Yes. They were already made. They were already discovered. They had already been into use. And so now we're in 2022. The wheel is still the wheel. Amen. It's just been enhanced. But it ain't brand new. Amen, amen. Now I got a witness. And with that being said, I, 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 think, I think you can help me with this one. With that being said, what I, what, I, what I find to be amazing today in today's time is this. We don't go back to the old way of worship. 
and the old way of praise simply because it took something more than what we're willing to give now Amen. for us to stay in the face of God like we did back in the, in the old way. Hallelujah. And so this new style of worship, it ain't new. Mm. All it is is a shortcut of what has already been. Mm. I wish I had a witness in here. Hallelujah. But if you look at this, watch this. When you look at it, when, when I said Papa can help me with this, when we were, we, remember when the kids were little? Uh-huh. And you bought them something that 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 required that you put it together. Uh -huh. When you would open up the box, the box would have a booklet yeah. of instructions yeah. on how you put it together one piece at a time. Amen. Well, when you open up the box of the new stuff now, you get something in the box that says quick setup. Uh -huh. oh, that's Amen. Amen. It says quick setup. So in other words, it bypasses step by step yeah. and takes you to the one step that, that, that should, but it don't tell you how you put it all together in the middle. It just says you start here, you finish here, and that's what you got. Hallelujah. And, and, and see, that's what's happening with our praise now. And folks call it this new age of praise. No, it's not. It's just a quick setup. Amen. But if we'll go back to the basic instructions, which is the Bible, the Bible is our instructions. And if you notice, it goes from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And when we're trying to put together our worship, when we're trying to put together our praise, we must go through the manual and understand that every screw goes someplace. Every nut goes someplace. Every boat goes someplace. What am I trying to say? Every time I lift my hands, it should go someplace. Every time I say hallelujah, it should go someplace. Every time I sing praises, it should go someplace. Place. Yeah. But if I don't read the instruction, <laughs> then how do I know how to properly put it together for Amen. it to work? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Amen. I remember back in the day, Mama used to stay on her face and tear it all night long. Have I got a witness Amen. in here? They, 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 were, they, were, they were just like Jacob. They would they were stay on their face and they would wrestle with the Lord until he, he until he, he blessed them. He, he gave them an answer. And when they got the answer, they would get up. If they had to stay there from 9 p.m. until 9 a.m., they refused to get up until God answer their question. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness Hallelujah. in here? But now we want to get down and we want to push three, 35 seconds on the microwave and give God a microwavable prayer and expect for us to have a big meal. But I need you to know, if you really, really, really want to be in the presence of God, you got to make sure that the old still works. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about this for a minute. Here the writer was telling us about the things that were Begging back in the day and how they are still relevant today uh -huh. is letting us know that we are not recreating anything today, mm -hmm. but that the things of today has already been. In other words, mm -hmm. watch this. we are in 2022. Now the year has changed, but the things of the year is still the same. Amen. People are looking at this pandemic and they're saying, oh, we are uh, this pandemic and what's happening with the world? Well, baby, I come by to tell you that this pandemic stuff ain't new. Mm -hmm. Read back over in Exodus when they talked about how God sent the plagues. Yes, the yes. plagues is no different than the pandemic. It's just got a different name. Amen, amen, amen. So therefore, we must understand that everything that's going on now has happened before. Amen. And so instead of you believing that it's new, you need to revert back to how it happened and what happened. Yes. And then you need to put yourself in the position that they did to make sure that you're covered while it's happening. Have I got a witness in here? And so now we look at this. Watch this. That we have to take the same mentality when it comes down to our praise and our worship. Yeah. Can I just give you a clear understanding? Yeah. When you praise God, you praise God for what he's done. Amen. But when you worship God, you worship God for who he is. Amen. How about Amen. Yeah. Amen. You praise God because you're being thankful for the things that he's done. Yeah. But when you worship God, you're worshiping him because of who he is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the problem has been that we get a misconception about what worship is yeah. and believe that worship is only when we lift up our hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to come by and tell you that worship is a component for everything in a Christian's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that you do, it should be a sign of worship. Yeah. What are you talking about, preacher? Because worship is the thing that is intended to bring God glory. Yeah. Have I got a witness? So everything that you do in your life as a Christian should bring God glory. Amen. And if it brings 
God glory, then that means that it's a, it's a point of your worship. Mm -hmm. Now, it's amazing because back in the day, they worship God just because he's God. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it seems like we got to worship God only when we want something from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, I want to establish this thing with us because to believe that we can establish a new way of praise and worship is a load of practice insanity. You cannot give God something new based off of something that had already been created. If you look all the way back in the Old Testament, there were all of the Old Testament saints that praised God and gave God authentic worship. They would worship him no matter what was going on. They would worship him no matter what time of the day. They would worship him no matter how they felt because they understood that the God that they were giving their worship to was a God that was always present, always showing up, and always making sure that they were in the right stand. Always brought them back from when they had, had strayed away. That kind of God deserved that kind of worship. And I wish that we would use some of them old mentalities of worship, get our minds and our hearts in the old space so that God can come and do the things that he did in the old days because I found out that the old times was all right, but God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he can bless them back then, then he can bless us right now. But it takes for us to go back to the old time. Where that's why them old songs continue to generate in your heart. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. What a friend we have in Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I wish I had three people that had an old song in their heart, that old rugged cross. When we go back to the old that's been established, then we can push into the power that will help us in this new age because the age may appear new but the times are still. Uh, so now if, if, if our worship is sincere from the start, then mm -hmm. our original worship will work if we properly use it. Amen. Uh, uh, but something that's new in today's time, it tends to be more difficult to start using simply because it does not come with a fullness of proper instructions. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. We don't spend time in church right now teaching our kids how to pray. Hallelujah. We don't spend time teaching our kids how to worship. Yeah. We don't spend time teaching them how to study the Bible. Hallelujah. We don't spend time teaching them how to reference God in everything they do. But rather we come in here and sing a couple of songs, jump around, be happy for a few minutes. Yeah. When it's over, wipe the sweat off our brow, get in our car and go back to the same old way. But I need you to know that if your worship is for real, when you come in and give it to God, when you leave, something ought to change. You ought to leave here better than you came. Your mind should be in a different place than it was when you got here. Simply because if it's for God, it don't have to be new, it just has to be relevant. It doesn't have to be something that is cute, it just has to be pure. I wish I had a witness. And I need you to know that the effects of God is not going to be new. Because the Bible says when the glory cloud fell in the old days, he says that everybody got impacted by the glory cloud falling. Because the presence and the power of God rested upon everybody. Well, I need you to know that if we can press in in the new day, we can realize that the same old power will rest down upon the saints in the church here. But if your heart is not in the right place, you won't feel the presence of God anyway. I need you to go back to the old day when your Bible is falling apart. Get out of the cell phone and get yourself the Bible. Put your tablet down and turn some pages for a while. Because every once in a while, you got to touch something old to remind you that this thing that we're in right now, it has been here before. And the same God that blessed them is the same God that will bless right now. And so when we say bless the wonderful name of Jesus, I need you to know that Jesus, his name still has power. His name still works. His name still transforms. His name still delivers. Have I got a witness in this house? So we got to go back. Jesus' name back then was J-E-S-U-S. -S. Don't call him Jesus because he's still Jesus. I wish I had somebody praying with me here, mother. And now we've got to get to the place where we realize that it is nothing new up under the sun. We've got to realize that the things that we see now has happened before. History is just repeating itself over and over again. And if I can encourage somebody this morning, it's just like a runner in a race. Pop, if I run a race this time and I take the last place, the next time I run the race, the race appears real or the race appears new. But the real thing is, it's still 
still a race. It's a race that I ran before. And if I want to do better in the race that I ran before, I don't have the new way of running. I just need to adjust some things that I didn't do in the last run. What I have to do is learn from what I didn't do and adjust myself so when I do it again, I can get a better result. It's not a new win. It's just a better win. It's not a new race. It's just a better race. It's not a new chance. It's just another chance. And I wish I understood somebody that understood that that's where God is. He's the God of another chance. He don't give you a new chance. He just gives you another chance. Amen, amen. He gives you a chance to do over what you didn't do right the last time. You get a chance to run your race again, Pop. And when I get to the starting line, I may not have got myself down in my stance correctly. I may not have came out the blocks correctly. I may not have come up fast enough. But now that I've made my adjustments, because I went back and reviewed what I didn't do, and I started realizing that if I go back to what the coach taught me a long time ago, and not try to come up with this new stuff that other folks is doing, I can come out the blocks the way God says, and the end result is far better than what it would have been if I wanted to do this new stuff. Have I got a witness in here? I was to do what? Stop trying to have a fancy praise. I heard mother say that you got to get up here and pray. Well, I need y'all to know that old prayers still work. What do I mean by old prayers, y'all? You can get up here and say, Father, I thank you for this day. And I bless your name because you are so good. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't try to be like these new fancy folk and come up here and say, God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the father that sits high and looks low, the father with all power in your hand. Don't get fancy like the old deacons used to do and say there's power in the name. But just give God a simple little prayer because the same prayer that you give him in simplicity like they did in the old days will still reach heaven completely and it'll sit down the power completely. So we stop thinking that we got to do something new. <laughs> but our job is just to tap into what was old. <laughs> because I need y'all to know something. Now, if I can give you just another example. The example would be with cars. <laughs> can we talk about a car for a minute? <laughs> Back in the day, the old car was made well. <laughs> it was made real nice. <laughs> and if you look at some of these folks nowadays, they're taking old cars and just painting them and restoring them and making them look new. But if you look at the inside of the car, the car is still old. It may have some different parts, but the car is still old. And what makes the car look so good is they took some of the things and polished it up. And they made it look fancy, mother. But when we look at these new cars, if it rained a little bit too hard, it's going to short circuit and stop working. But that old car will take a licking and it'll keep on it may have a little rust in it. It may be a little bit tarnished. But when you crank it up, it still continues to go. Put a little paint on it, but it's still an old car. Put some new wheels on it, but it's still an old car. And I would that Christians would be like the old car. Don't worry about the rust, because the rust just signifies how good you are, how old you are, and how well together you have been put. And I would that somebody would be like an old 56 Chevy. Just be well put together. Get you a little bit of paint. But when you crank up, don't change the way you sound. Crank it up and make it go Because there's something about that old that lets the new know that I was put together well. It was time put in. I have good material. And now I can take a little That's tired of falling apart and every storm that come in your life. If you be like that old car, well put together, the rain may come and the storm may blow. Your paint might peel, you might get a little bit of rush. But when you get cranked up, you'll still go to your destination because you've been put together and it ain't about the new. But you let them know, ah, I've been here before. Yeah. So let your praise.
Joseph, uh, uh, R.A. Williams, uh, he preached an old message uh, that's still effective in the new day. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, let's go back to his method. Uh, let's go back to having church uh, the old time way. Uh, because I found out that the old still works. some things out. Yeah. But I need you to know because I want us to spend some time in this thing called worship. Uh -huh. yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. David said in Psalms 34, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. When he says, I will bless the Lord, in other words, he was saying, I will give him this worship uh -huh. uh, uh, that will allow everything that I do to bring him glory. Yeah. And if I can, can I help somebody right yeah. here? Your, your job in worship is to do what? Is to accentuate who God is so that even a non-believer will understand that there is a God. Amen. And you worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh -huh. And when a non-believer sees you worshiping God uh -huh. and sees the results of the atmosphere and what God does for you, then he can realize that he can tap into that same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, and when yeah. he gets in, watch this, watch this. And God just gave me this when I was on my way here. The only thing that is new is when you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior. When the Bible declared that all things pass away and behold all things have become new and so now listen to this your praise wasn't a praise that affected God before you became saved because you didn't have a relationship with him before you became saved oh I wish I had somebody but when you became new in Christ and you developed a relationship with him now you have a reason to bring him glory because you understand who he is and what he stands for and so since now you got your relationship with him you can understand what David says I'll bless him at all times and I, his praise will always be in my mouth but I need you to know that you can go a little bit further because if you think about David himself David's praise didn't start or David's praise wasn't new at the time that God took his child and when God released him, his praise wasn't no different Amen. than it was when he was the little boy in the field. Amen. His praise wasn't no different. His worship wasn't no different when he danced out of his clothes than he was when he killed the lion and the bear. Yeah. But what I need you to know is this. In David spending time with God and realizing who God was and spending that intimate moments with him and allowing God to lavish him with love, he was able to tap in every time something went on in his life. And what he did is every experience that he encountered, with every trial and tribulation that he encountered, what he did was tap in to some old worship and allow for the power of God to be illustrated into the midst of what was going on. He was too little in stature to kill the giant. But his praise activated the power. His worship activated the power. And it allowed for God to use him to kill something he shouldn't have killed. Have I got a witness here? His worship is what kept him from killing Saul. But kept him in the mindset of praise and worship. When his baby died and he laid in the temple on his face, it wasn't the new prayer. It was the same prayers he was praying when he was in the field with the lions. But what I come by to tell you is this. If you knew what it was back then, stop trying to change what it is right now. And use what you had back then. And use it right now. Be sincere about your prayer. Be sincere about your praise. Be sincere about your asking. Be sincere about your believing. Be sincere about having faith. Because I come by to tell you that the same faith that Moses used when he stuck up the rock and the Red Sea opened is the same faith that you can use right now when your child is out in the streets and you're so simply worried. Go back to the old seat and get that same old faith and stretch that faith out over your child situation. And watch God open the Red Sea. It ain't Sun. Now, my praise back then will help my affect my situation.
situation right now. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that the old, it still works. Tell your neighbor, stop using the new stuff and go back to the old stuff. Because some of this new stuff got some old stuff taken out. And if the old stuff ain't in it, then it just don't have the potential to work. Have you got a witness? Because God an old God that still operates in a new time and still do the same things today that he did yesterday. You ought to try him and see for yourself that he's good. Oh, yes, he is. So David, he was somebody that showed God that he was worthy of his praise. Have I got a witness? Uh -huh. But remember, worship uh -huh. is not just the lifting of your hands, but it's also a sacrifice uh -huh. that you need. Have I got a witness? Uh -huh. If we look at Abraham, uh -huh. the Bible lets us know uh -huh. that Abraham was put to the test Hallelujah. when he received the birth of his child yes. at an age that him and his wife couldn't fathom. Yes. Isn't it amazing? Watch this. God, thank you. They were old. Yes. And God still brought forth something from the oldness of who they were. Because of the old faith that they had to reactivate in the new time. Now I got a witness. And here Isaac was born to them at an old age. And God appointed him to sacrifice his son. And because Abraham understood the pure essence of what worship was. Yeah. He didn't ask God any questions. Uh, I'd like to say this, Sister Katie, that, that if that was me and I had to sacrifice my child, I don't think I'd have came back home because my wife would have took me out yeah, and sacrificed me too. Yeah, I waited this long to have this baby and now you going to go and put him on an altar and cut him up? I wish you would. Yeah, but because Abraham, uh -huh. he had an old faith in a new time. He went forth to make his sacrifice. And when he got ready to kill the baby, God told him from the angel, he says, hold up, wait a minute. There's a ram in the bush. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to see how far you would go. But Abraham had some old faith. The faith that's the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. He had the old faith the size of a mustard seed. He believed that if God called me to it, that God sure enough will see me through. So he stayed in the old stuff. Because the new stuff just wasn't working. And when it was all said and done, God says, now you're going to be the father of many nations. Simply because his act of worship, it wasn't new, but it was reverent. Have I got a witness here? Noah was willing uh, to take ridicule of a whole lot of people. Uh, talking about him for him building that ark. Uh, they're looking around and the sun was out uh, and the days was clear. Uh, and why are you building this boat, man? Uh, but he remembered what the Lord said. Uh, he got every single piece just like God says. Uh, he put that boat together just like God says. Uh, he put the folks in the boat just like God says. Uh, and when the flood came just like God says. He let Noah, his wife, his kids, and two of every animal inside the boat. Amen. But because he was willing to sacrifice something, yeah. which was a form of his worship, God blessed him to be able to be a blessing to the world because they reproduced and allowed for the world to have another opportunity. Amen. It ain't a new world. It's just God just did the world over again in the old way. Have I got a witness here? And so therefore we look at Noah. And then if we look at this other woman, there was a woman in the Bible who had an alabaster box. And the Bible declared that this woman was an outcast. This woman was somebody that was looked down upon. This woman was somebody that was frowned on. But yet when she heard the words of Jesus, what happened with her is this. Something old on the inside got rejuvenated and began to see things in a different perspective. And the Bible says that she took that oil 
uh, that was real expensive. Uh, and she poured it all over Jesus. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that she hadn't been in relationship with him yet? Uh, yeah. But she was close enough to be impacted by who he was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And she did something that made him receive the glory. Uh, have I got a witness? Yeah. It, was, it, 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 was, it was a sacrifice that she made. Uh, and the disciples looked and said, why is she spending all that expensive stuff? Uh, well, when you're willing to worship God, yeah. you yeah. ain't gonna put a price on how much it is. Yeah. Back in the old days, I'll give him all that I got yeah. because he's willing to give me all that he has. Yeah. Have I got a witness in here? And then we look at the woman that the Bible says in Mark that only had two mites. And if we look at that equivalent to money, all she had was like two pennies. But yet when she put it in the offering, that was all she had. And God says that it was more in them two pennies than those that brought in the thousands. Because she did it from a place of sacrifice. And she held on to the oldness of who she was in Christ Jesus and did what she had to do in a new time. But she was blessed over and over again. Then we look at Paul and Silas. How the Bible says at midnight they sung praise and worship. But if you think about midnight it's the darkest, coldest, quietest time of the night. It's the stillest time of the night. And they didn't come up with a new song, Mother Brian. But in the midnight hour, they had to sing praise and worship from a place that accentuated who God was simply because of what was going on. They were in the innermost, darkest part of the jail. And when they began to praise God at that hour, they had to praise Him from a standpoint of pressing down fear. And pressing down the possibilities of what was going to happen. And they pressed in because they understood that if I give God a sacrificial praise right now, that something around me has to die. Amen. And what had to die was fear. What had to die was a lack of faith. What had to die was the potential of giving up. What had to die was this old watered down joy and praise. And when they began to pray and give God all of the glory, the Bible said that God sent an earthquake to begin to shake some things up.
get out of the gypsy days and let's go back to the old days where the stuff really worked. Have I got a witness? Tell somebody the old still works. Yes, it does. So while we're here, y'all, let's have some old time. Yes. 
to set us back to the old worship. Yes. Because see, when we go back to the old faith and the old worship, we don't worry about who he is and who ain't. Amen. We worry about our position mm -hmm. and what he's called us to do. Because if we can seek his face mm -hmm. and just worry about what we do in his face, yes. he'll take care of everything else that we thought we wanted. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Sometimes until he gets you where he wants you, yes, yes. he won't add to because then it will detour, delay, mm. or dilute what he's yes. trying to do through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That can be an impact Hallelujah. for somebody else. Mm. Have I got a witness in here? Amen. But if we're not intentional about giving him our best, mm -hmm. then he's not going to be intentional with giving us his best. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? Mm. It ain't tip for that. But what it is, is he can't give you more than you're ready to handle. Amen. Amen. And if we can't handle us, he sure ain't going to give us no more of us. Hallelujah. In the physical, in the spiritual, in the financial, in anything. Yes. But the moment we lay it down and say, God, if it's three of us, we're going to let it all hang out like it's 300 of us. Amen. 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 We're going to step up and step in. Hmm. I ain't never prayed before, but my mama did. Amen. Amen. I ain't never sang before. Did y'all see Shaq on the commercial? Hey, mama, mama, we got to put a box in here with a makeshift shower head and some sound to make it sound like you in the shower for you to get up here and sing. Then so be it. Get up here and sing because Hallelujah. it's not Hallelujah. pleasing or entertaining man. Hallelujah. Because if it's sincere from the heart, the Bible lets us know that that's a sweet smell and savor yes. in the nostrils of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I have told people, I've had people in groups that couldn't hold a note in a freaking bulldozer bucket. Hmm. But because their heart was sincere Amen. and they were willing to go the extra mile and try, Amen. I said, I'll take them over a great voice and no dedication all day long. You Amen. know why? Because I know when we get up, we're going to worship for real. Yeah, we're not going to call somebody to listen. Listen to me. When we have service, <coughs> folks should be able to feel the authenticness of who God is. Yes, hallelujah. And just in case y'all don't know, God ain't brand new. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And nothing that he does is brand new. Amen. Because you can go through history and find out that everything that was done then hmm. is being done now. Amen. He's still delivering. Yes. He's still setting free. Yes. He's still opening up blind eyes. Yes. He's still mending broken hearts. Amen. He's still healing the sick. He's still raising the dead. Yes. You know why we don't hear about these miracles as much now as we did back then? It's because we're trying this new stuff. Amen. 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 Amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Pop, I don't see one church in the Bible that had $100, $50, $75 lines. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. <laughs> I, hadn't, I, I didn't see anywhere where somebody charged you to prophesy to you. Hmm. Amen. But when the Spirit led, you did what the Spirit led. True. Amen. And just like the day of Pentecost, when they all came in on one accord, one accord yes. that's when the Spirit of God failed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you really want the Spirit of God to fall on our house like He did back in the old days, because it's still the same thing. Yes, it is. If you really want to feel the presence of God falling and everybody in the church get impacted, yeah. that's practice coming in here. I want to call. Amen. Amen. I want us to try something. Starting next Sunday, I don't care what you're going through, all the way up to the moment you get to church. I don't care what you're going through all week or whatever else. Before you walk through the doors of the church. Ask God to check that coat of despair. Hallelujah. Because God is the coat check at the door of church. Amen. Amen. And he'll take your coat off you and hang it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. that you're free enough to come in and enjoy what's going on. Mm. That when you go back to get your coat, he didn't put it through the dry cleaner. Mm. He didn't took the lint balls off. Yeah. And when you leave here, you leave here better. Why? Because if you came in heavy and you leave your coat where you can be delivered from some yeah. stuff, yeah. let God deliver you and move on. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're only as good as yeah. the faith that you have in the God that you Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And let me tell you the other thing that you can do to help you every Sunday when you come in here. Don't wait till you get to church before you start praying. Amen. Don't wait till you get to church before you start singing praise Amen. and worship. Don't wait till you get to church before you start tapping into the presence of who God Amen. is. But when you wake up, tell God thank you. Thank you get in dress, yes. sing some songs. When you get in your car, if you don't want to play no music, then you just say, make up a song if you want to. Amen. Jesus is so Christian. Tell him what. I don't know. <laughs> Give God. Mm. Amen. Don't you play that when you go to church. <laughs> 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 Mother Candy going to say, I seen him coming down Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, amen. Because God wants what you have. Mm. What he's instilled in you mm. days ago, months mm. ago, years yes. ago. Watch this. We were created to worship him. Yes. Yes, so even before you have established a relationship mm. with him, he has already imparted the spirit of worship in you. Yes. But it became alive once you became saved yes. and at one with him. Mm. Come on, with us. Amen. Now it becomes activated. But what good is it to use to have something that's activated that you yes. never use? Hallelujah. Can I see the hands of somebody in here that's got a cell phone activated that's sitting in your drawer and you never use it but you pay the bill every month? Mm -hmm. Anybody here, right? You, you got a cell phone? Now watch this. If you get it cut off because you ain't using it, you'll find out you're going to save some money. Uh -huh. So you better things with it. Watch this. I'm saying that to say this. Why have a worship that's activated that you stick in a drawer and never use it? Mm -hmm. So therefore, you never get the benefit of what it was created for. Amen. In the weeks to come, I'm going to share with you the significance of your worship and what it brings when you sincerely do it. Watch. And we can show you evidence of how it worked then mm -hmm. and how it's working now. Amen. So it ain't nothing new. Mm -hmm. The book hasn't been rewritten. Mm -hmm. It may have a new cover. Amen. It may have a new version. But it's still the same word. Hallelujah. If it's the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. Now we have some folk. We have the we have the challenge people. You know, the challenge folk. Hmm. The ones that believe that it's okay for a man to sleep with a man, a woman to sleep with a woman that have their own Bible. Amen. Amen. It's not the Holy Bible. Hmm. It's a Bible according to what their mindset says. Hmm. That ain't the Bible I'm talking about. They have a satanic worship Bible. Hmm. That ain't the Bible I'm talking Amen. about. But I'm talking about the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. The one that God wrote, an inspired man to write. Amen. And they wrote it based off of what he said to them and not what they wanted to say to us. How about women? Hallelujah. Let's go back to the King James way. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Let's go back to the original. Yes. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Probably go a little bit deeper. Let's go back to the Hebrew way. Let's go back to, because the original language was written in Hebrew mm -hmm. and Aramaic. Amen. Let's go back to where, before it was translated, it was still Amen. the Word of God. Amen. How about women? And the same way that it was written then, mm -hmm. and it applied then, it's still written and applied today. Amen. The only difference is it's written in English. Hallelujah. So that you won't get lost in translation. Mm -hmm. How about witness? Amen. Cedar Grove. This can be the best year of the life of Cedar Grove. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only way it can be the best year yes. is if we stay tapped into what's old. Yes. And bring the old power, the old effects. Yes. The old intention into the new time, the new mm -hmm. day, the new age. Because remember, this day, mm -hmm. even though it's a day we've never seen before, yes. this day has happened before in history somewhere. May not 2022. Hallelujah. But the things in this day has happened. Matter of fact, watch this. Who was here last Sunday? <laughs> Only thing different from last Sunday and this Sunday is the day. Mm -hmm. Amen. The purpose of the day was still the same. We were here. Yes. Don't got a witness? Amen. So if we're going to go day after day after day repeating what's already been done in history, then we ought to get better results because of what has already been done in history and proven that it works. How about a witness? Amen. If we want the church to be added to daily, 
then we gotta bring our gifts to the store. We gotta bring our gifts up in here. We gotta bring our gifts up in here. And let's not let's not mistake our gifts being money and money only. But our gifts is everything that God has entrusted in our power. Amen. That's your prayers. That's your song. That's your ability to clean up. That's your ability to cook. That's your ability to do uh, secretarial work. Whatever it is, bring it to the storehouse. Amen. Be on one accord. And by the way, the Bible says, then God will add to the church. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Let's be intentional about what we do. Now, I'm going to challenge us, too. I'm going to challenge us, and I want you to watch what happens. Starting next Sunday. We can be at church at least by 740 and spend 10 minutes walking through the church praying before service. Hallelujah. I guarantee you what comes out of service yes. is far stronger than it would be if we just came in and started service. Amen. Amen. And the reason why I say that is this. If we exercise his presence in and give him full authority before service starts, we don't have to spend most of service trying to get everybody motivated for the movement. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Amen. If we do that many times where the songs sang in, in, in praise and worship can be strong enough to set the atmosphere that the word will never go forward because the song had already preached. The Holy Spirit can preach them anything he chooses to. And if you really want your soul to be caught on fire, then let's come in here and do it the old way. Amen. Because the church in the old days Somebody was at church before the church opened. Hallelujah. They was getting there on their face praying. And when the preacher came in and when the choir came in, the spirit was so right mm -hmm. that they couldn't help but to have a good time. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. I challenge us this year. I challenge us this year. Garden of Praise, mm -hmm. I challenge them. I put them on the same thing. Yeah. We're in a hotel. And I tell them, I don't care. The room is open at 915. At 9 o'clock, if you got to stand at the door and just be praying down the hallway, mm -hmm. when the door opens, the spirit will go in because that's where we targeted the spirit to be. Amen. But don't sleep all the way until 9.05 mm -hmm. and then rush to get there. You get there at 9.17, ready for Sunday school, and your mind ain't even clear to receive what the word is. Amen. Says. Are you with me? That 15 minutes lets you dump everything that's been having you heavy throughout the week. Because God cannot bless you and put more in you if it's too crowded in there with the stuff that's been hindering you from saying mm. hallelujah anyway. Amen. And if you do that, he'll see that the, you'll see that what you went through throughout the week was necessary for you to get into his face with praise and worship. Hallelujah. And for him to bless you that when you have to repeat that, you're not repeating something new. You're going back and getting it right the next time. Amen. You learned the lesson. You heard from the Spirit. You went and applied what you learned to the same situation, and you wind up getting a better result. Mm. Have I got a witness? Amen. Who with me? Let's start this thing off right. Who's with me? Hallelujah. Who's with me? Hallelujah. Let's get in here. 740, 745 at the latest. Just spend 10 minutes of prayer. No talking, no worship, no, no gossiping, no talking, no, 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 no none of that. That's walking with the intentions to pray. Amen. Don't wait for somebody to say, hey, we're going to pray. Walk in here ready to pray. Hmm. And if don't nobody else start praying, you walk in and pray. Amen. Because sometimes Amen. you can be the reminder, oh, yeah, hmm. and get everybody else on board. But Amen. if we're always waiting on one person to start it, we'll always miss what God's trying to do. Hallelujah. You be the starter. If everybody come in with a starter mentality, guess what? We don't want to go. Amen. Have we got with us? Hallelujah. It takes 21 days to form a habit. It hmm. takes three days to break it. Mm -hmm. And the same way you walk around here 15 minutes early, get about your bed 10 or 15 minutes early mm -hmm. and walk around your house and begin to praise God Amen. before you get in your shower and brush your teeth and all that other kind of stuff and watch the atmosphere that changes in your house mm -hmm. and that starts off your day. Because when hell break loose, mm -hmm. the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest upon you so heavy mm -hmm. that it won't be nothing to get you to take your mind off of Jesus. And that's what they did in the old day. Hallelujah. The old still works. <laughs> Amen. 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 Give God some praise in here.
said, oh, so I'm fake. So I'll change the keys You, Lord. She looked at boy. She Thank you. 